Breaking news. The IDP's currency may still be valid today. The reading of the IDP in probate court continued with its own dose of surprises. One of the first was the IDP's insistence in framing Dominica not as a small island developing country or an emerging market economy, but one of a sovereign state. As it was in the time of the IDP, we still had a flag, a national anthem, coat of arms, president and prime minister, and all the attributes of a sovereign state. The one problem that the IDP was forced to overcome at that time was the reluctance to accept that the obligation was ours in Dominica to find our own solutions based on our own interpretation of our own situation, no one else's. Then, as in now, Dominica had the same symptoms of underdevelopment a weak local community structure where persons found more hope in becoming economic refugees than in mobilizing to reconstruct their families, their communities, and their lives. The vulnerability of our physical location to earthquakes, hurricanes, and natural disasters, as well as the social vulnerability to rising violent crime and corruption in public places. The collective punishment being imposed through conditionalities such as the visa requirement on persons seeking to travel with a Dominican passport, fiscal instability and financial gaps in our national budget, the struggle to find a reliable way to sustain economic growth, and public policy, which just didn't seem to get it right. Well, last week in probate court, the IDP's last will and testament on these current day issues was exposed for everyone to see and hear that the IDP still has currency that you can spend today. Most of what I'm going to say except for the preamble context, will come directly from the IDP of 202. You can find a copy of this document and verify the same if you so choose. On local government, when you read the IDP, you will be surprised to find out how well it stays within the legal institutional structure for broad-based governance in Dominica, which was introduced almost 128 years ago. That structure has evolved from two municipal boards in 1896 to four to one village councils today in 2024. In 2019, Dr. Emmanuel Finn wrote a commentary published in Dominican News Online entitled The Beginning of the Demise of the Village Council System in Dominica. Why was he so upset? Well, he thought that the politics of big money and national political meddling had invaded, infected, and in some cases corrupted some village councils. For him, the system was facing insurmountable challenges, which, if the trajectory continued, will surely lead to its demise. Now, that was in 2019. He was obviously not aware that 20 years earlier, the IDP had elucidated the process of decentralization as a gradual process that must be developed with care, sensitivity, and inclusion. In the debate as to whether we should centralize or decentralize government functions, the IDP proposed that government be willing to move in both directions, 
that is decentralizing some functions while centralizing other critical policy making responsibilities. Being totally aware that the constitution of each village council made provisions for the establishment of subcommittees to attend to specific aspects of the community's development, the IDP had proposed that the councils use that authority to co-opt other groups and organizations as well as professionals with skills in the community to develop proposals of their burgesses into local area development plans. So the IDP had proposed local area development plans to give consideration to new spatial arrangements for the organization and structuring of a cadre of service delivery units at the local level responding to the demand in health, education, community development, housing and transportation. Local government was to become involved in promoting investment initiatives in the area with the collaboration of the leadership of the private sector, civil society and others. And that local groups should make an inventory of human resource skills in local areas as the basis for proposing development initiatives. And to cover the expenses of doing all this, the IDP proposed a Social Investment Fund, SIF, to fund initiatives from emerging local area-wide development committees. On the question of conditionalities. In 2002, the IDP had come to grips with the fact that government, in search of external financial support, would obviously have to bargain with extraneous conditionalities, mostly guardrails governing the funds that can be accessed and used. Well, these conditionalities were generally designed the fashion government's intention. The IDP was the only document in the history of planning in Dominica that proposed a sensible alternative to these senseless letters of intent, which the government kept failing with the IMF, the European Commission, and other international financial institutions. It proposed two distinct sets of Implicit contracts between government and the rest of society, that is, private sector and civil society, as defining the internal conditionality of the government's intent. Unlike the simple conditionalities, which are attached to financial contracts, the implicit contracts of the IDP comprised of structural and institutional measures adopted within the guidance of the IDP and designed to maximize the gain from any direct local and or external assistance. But these measures were not simple suggestions within a general plan to be adopted by the Ministry of Finance in Dominica. Why wouldn't anyone sign such lofty worded contracts of conditionality? that would surely become ineffective as years passed by. You need to know that unlike other development plans, the IDP contained a legislative agenda. As a result, the IDP presented its social and economic contracts for the government as measures enacted by statutory law passed by the legislature which would make them binding on this and every succeeding government until they were amended by Parliament. The IDP's social contract with stakeholders comprised the following structures. 1. A medium-term public expenditure framework. 2. Mechanisms for information sharing. 3. 
mechanisms for decentralized planning and the social investment fund. The economic contract with stakeholders was established in the IDP as follows. 1. A functioning code of financial management practices in the public sector. 2. A commission for agriculture. 3. A common approach to environment, physical planning, and disaster mitigation. And 4. Broad economic participation for stakeholders in tourism services and in agriculture. So, regardless of what an international financial donor may seek to do to ensure how his financial resources are used, the government can find cover by informing them that it too had obligations and commitments to the people who put it in power, as expressed in the social and economic contract items. This is how the IDP's social and economic contracts between the government and the stakeholders were expected to work. The IDP had also worked out the macroeconomic framework that would follow. These were as follows. There would be basic indicators telling us that the fundamentals of the economy are changing. Then there would be budget indicators telling us how we expect fiscal stabilization to proceed. Then there would be trade indicators showing both a renewed capacity for export and also how we expect a more diversified production export structure to emerge. And then there would be some memo items of urgency dealing with the linked growth of institutional capabilities. As for the context that suggested this approach, the IDP had as its starting point 10 most desirable events. These were as follows. To reduce the fiscal balance, to improve macroeconomic indicators, an institutional framework for a modernized public service to be put in place, the economy to start to recover, stability is created in our financial systems, the business environment opens up to new market opportunities, export becomes stronger again, unemployment is reduced, foreign direct investment and portfolio inflows increase, and the chances of a future crisis significantly reduced. Are these any different from what we would expect as desirable events today? Performance Budgeting Well, the court became extremely silent when the bailiff mentioned the next item, performance budgeting. Most spectators were quietly asking each other, what is that? Everyone is familiar with such terms as deficit spending, closing the expenditure gap, and fiscal adjustment. All terms that have been used by the conventional theory to explain the status of government budgets. The term performance budgeting caused much a stir in the court because you would have to go to the IDP to find out what it is and how it works. Since the stated objective of the Integrated Development Plan was to allow all stakeholders in the national community to share in the responsibility for the management of the economy at the broadest level of society, then to be consistent the IDP had to include explicit measures to involve stakeholders in the formulation of the budget. The performance of the budget, therefore, had to impact both on the public sector balance sheet and the private sector balance sheet. What helped to fashion the performance of the national budget were twofold. First, the IDP presented a procedure 
in which the implementation plan was expected to directly influence the composition of public expenditure in the national budget. And secondly, the plan and budget framework, as envisioned by the IDP, had also to include bringing investment capital to a wider cross-section of the population through extra budgetary funding programs. These extra budgetary funding programs were identified as such a basic need trust fund, a banana trust fund, a social recovery strategy, a Dominica Rural Enterprise Project, the Social Investment Fund, and local area concept plans. The IDP's performance budgeting concept was captured in these three major aspects critical to the future government budgets in Dominica. These were the changing role of government intervention, the planning framework for promoting economic growth, that is, the IDP's dynamic growth movements, and the Social Investment Fund, an extra budgetary fund to mobilize local area investments. The truism in the IDP is this. The budget must be framed to understand and reverse the situation and not the opposite. In other words, it is not the people and the situation that has to be reconditioned to pay for the costs to accommodate the budget. Does that sound familiar? Dynamic growth movements within the IDP. How does the IDP summon dynamic loops of economic growth into existence? The IDP took existing conventional strategies for growth, extracted the useful content, and produced new guidelines in the form of overarching themes. In this way, the IDP identified the challenges facing the society as it perceived them to be. And these were combating economic exclusion. Notice how they are framed. Investing in wellness and human development. Rebuilding local demand. Extending our capacity to capture an increasing percentage of regional markets and utilizing resources as they are made available through international agreements. The IDP then built its cluster impacting economic recovery strategy, focusing on three dynamic movements. One, the dynamic movement of increasing export earnings, that is increasing opportunities for the profitable use of investment funds, generating capital formation expenditure, strengthening internal economic linkages that require more employment and feeds more into the economic growth cycle. Two, the dynamic movement of investment in wellness that is health and in human resource capability that is education, thereby promoting the increase of entrepreneurs and service providers and leading to an increase in incomes from services both locally and exported. And three, the dynamic movement of reviving domestic demand, that is beginning with the demand in the rural sector through targeted social and economic recovery expenditures, simultaneously providing capital resources to indigenous enterprises to respond to local domestic demand, increasing indigenous production and employment, and expanding on new rural enterprise initiatives in tourism and in the services sector. When you read the IDP on promoting economic growth, you have to settle in your own consciousness 
one disconcerting conclusion, and that is this, that according to the IDP, growing the economy is more a consequence of the quality of capacity building among our people than the result of the quantity of capital investment in our sectors. Vulnerability and resilience. Here's another one for you, that of vulnerability and resilience. As mentioned earlier, the IDP had this tendency when facing various social and economic challenges in Dominica to regroup concepts and ideas to bridge the gap between decision and action. So when the IDP does this regrouping, it immediately signals how it proposes to solve the challenge. The structural vulnerabilities of small island developing states usually arose on account of their size, geographic location, limited resource base, market size, reliance on imports and tourism, and exposure to natural disasters. These all made us vulnerable to external shock. In August 2021, the Climate Ambition Support Alliance, known by the acronym of CASA, C-A-S-A, published an opinion entitled what is a multidimensional vulnerability index and how could it help SIDS? For your information, I should tell you that the Climate Ambition Support Alliance is a platform that sought to strengthen the capacity and support the engagement of climate vulnerable countries in international climate negotiations. They made a big fuss in recognizing the multidimensional nature of vulnerability in countries like ours. A range of vulnerability indices were developed covering different dimensions such as economic, social, environmental and governance. Twenty years earlier, however, the IDP had gone past this simple recognition of fact. The IDP's approach to the issue of vulnerability was this. Reflecting on the reality that economic and social shocks in Dominica were felt immediately at the level of the household, businesses, and communities, the IDP moved ahead to build institutional capacity through a program of empowerment at different levels of governance. To the IDP, a speedier response to external shocks may be achieved when there are institutional structures at the local level, that is, the village councils, the community groups, private sector, civil society, and NGOs in local development committees, through which information and other resources can be quickly mobilized to address the immediate as well as long-term effects. In the eyes of the IDP, planning for vulnerability was inseparable from planning for more effective governance. To this end, the IDP proposed as part of the social contract with government, a social investment fund to effectively share the costs of the delivery of social services even in the aftermath of a natural disaster across different levels of governance. And it also recognized an equal opportunity to share the responsibility for regenerating economic growth through the instruments of local area concept plans initiated by non-state entities. So while vulnerability was being viewed as multidimensional in 2021, the IDP had already viewed the effective response to vulnerability within the context of a multidimensional response financed by a social investment fund. Let me mention to you 
some of the targeted goals of the social investment fund. These are the things the fund was meant to target. Public works, social projects, supplementing agricultural inputs, general food security, asset improvement, risk reduction, local area development plans, direct production support, technical service intervention, and training for new opportunities. It is all there in the chart that you are looking at, and it explains how each one of these targeted by the social investment fund can generate employment and income, support investments, strengthen social delivery structure, and also raise up the level of local government participation. The management of public policy. Finally, let me tell you about one other IDP concept that you probably have never heard of. It is the management of public policy. We are so accustomed to speaking of public policy as if it were the exclusive domain of those in public office, like government ministers and senior civil servants. This is because we are conditioned to focus on the word policy. The IDP takes a different approach and focuses on the word public. So when the IDP speaks about the management of public policy, it is signaling to the political system that it should ready itself for the advent of citizen engagement in the development and implementation of economic and social policies. This is the issue of empowerment. Remember when we spoke of the trend in the IDP to group related concepts as it sought to broaden the problem set? Well, this is another example. The IDP always grouped the idea of governance with the concept of empowerment. So when the conventional international theories called for finance and structures to improve governance, the IDP called for these structures to improve empowerment. You get the difference? Way before the academic community started to recognize what the real name of the game was, the IDP had already brought to the intention of the public the fact that international conventions, global events, attitude changes in donor and recipient countries, these have been collectively changing the rules for succeeding in trade negotiations, in gaining donor support, in fiscal management and decentralization. The IDP went straight to that target and proposed its own intervention to change the rules of success. The IDP mechanism for consultation, participation, and information sharing continued to challenge decision makers at all levels of society to expand their mental boundaries outward towards new rules that will enhance empowerment at the local level. The social contract the economic contract, the management of public policy, these are all subjects that you hear nothing about these days. But in the IDP, they were all packed with subtle new rules, new emphasis, and new focuses to redefine success. So, what is the final game plan in the IDP? For sure. The IDP was not your conventional development plan that pursued a fiction up to the mountain of development thinking, only to find the summit barn and bare of creative ideas. It is amazing that such a comprehensive approach to development planning could be forged in such a small place like Dominica. It so overwhelmed the local technical advisor to the government at that time that it partially contributed to this monumental effort being shelved. The IDP was not the sort of plan 
that would tell government where to build a new bridge or when to claim a climate resilient economy has been built. The only thing that the IDP did not leave us was the simplistic tools that provided the illusion of economic growth and development. But even this absence should be regarded as an indictment for all of us to grow up and start smelling the coffee, become inquisitive, and find out what else the IDP process says. Thank you.